the fundamental idea that the next ecological range, the next place for the human race to expand to, is in fact colonies in free space itself, rather than the surfaces of planets, goes back a long time in human history. The first person who wrote it down in what seems to me to be a coherent and thoughtful and well-reasoned way was Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, uh, who wrote in Russia in the early years of this century. He certainly understood the fundamental idea that if one gets out into free space, one has solar energy as a free and inexhaustible, totally reliable source of energy to power a human civilization. And he also had the fundamental idea that there's a lot more room out there than there is on the surfaces of any of the planets in the solar system. The, there were, of course, a number of people in between, but then the next one that particularly caught my attention was Dandridge Cole. Dandridge Cole, writing in the 1960s particularly, looked at the possibility of converting asteroids to colonies in space that uh, could be used for human habitation. In the years from 1969 to 1974, uh, I looked at the logic of building habitats in space and realized that from very simple physics it made sense. Uh, there's constant sunlight there as a free energy source. Uh, there's a lot of room. There are materials in space adequate to build space habitats for thousands of times the present population of the Earth. And one can provide atmospheres, of course, simply by enclosure rather than by holding an atmosphere in with the very, very weak force of gravity as we do it on planets. One can provide rotation for a gravity that's of a kind that Dr. Newton taught us about some 400 years ago. All of these things are obvious. They're not complicated physics, but they make logical sense. And when I did my five years or so of of work on my own, talked about it with other people, finally there came a point where that volume of evidence, that volume of reasoning and logic was such that it was possible to have it published in a reviewed scientific journal. And that had been my goal. I didn't want to publish the work as science fiction because that would give it completely the wrong cast. This is serious reality of where we're going. So finally in 1974, we did reach the threshold of being able to publish that work in a reviewed scientific journal. Very quickly then, the ideas spread throughout the world and the general public caught on remarkably quickly. They understood the point of what was being said. It was in those five years of independent work that I also learned about the precursors, uh, Tchaikovsky and Cole, and the fact that they had been through much the same reasoning themselves years earlier than I had. There is a relationship between science and the opening of the space frontier that I think we need to understand. Science has been carried on really since relatively early in human history, always as a, a let's say, a one or two percent of the budget of whatever else was happening at the time. People's first thought is to live, eat, work, keep their families healthy and alive. They devote a tiny fraction of what they produce to opening up new scientific frontiers. The space program has been sort of backward up to the present time because it's been nothing but science and things which were done for political purposes. There isn't any production of something which is economically valuable that has come directly out of it, and I leave aside a 15-minute discussion of spin-offs and so on in the course of this. I think the, the really critical thing about the next phase in opening the space frontier is going to be that we're going to see the, the growth of actual economic productivity in space. When we do so, through such things as the construction of solar power satellites, the building of space colonies, which will house the workforce that will be working on valuable things in space, like oxygen production, 
uh, building power satellites and so on, then we're going to see a restoration of the proper balance. We're going to see the economic activity, the feeding the people activity as being the major activity. And it will be then very, very proper and very easy to justify a strong and continuing scientific program as being the necessary advanced guard of that economic and productive activity in space. I believe that that's going to be one of the most exciting things about this next phase of space development.